What's going on, guys? I am the one, the only, the W O O K I E. Take two, right? We're gonna take two because this is our second take. We had uh, we had some run-ins from the Chitlins coming around, but this is a deck I pulled today. Um, really, kind of made me scratch my my noodle McDoodle. Uh, I think we're probably gonna bounce around from tab to tab here uh, as you guys enjoy the fantastic voyage that is. O.R. Iroquois of the Opposing Sanctuary. And to help me out with this deck, I've brought Ryan from the Keychains podcast. Uh, Ryan, why don't you go ahead? Let's uh, let's get your plugs in there. Let's make sure people know who you are. Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm Ryan, as he said. Uh, my co-host Steve couldn't join us tonight, but he's the other half of our podcast. Um, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, um, Gmail, wherever you want to get us, uh, Keychains Pod. And and Instagram, where Keychains Podcast, because Instagram is fantastic. Because <laughs> Instagram is so much fun. We're going to try to break this up, because I think I've stolen enough of Ryan's time today. Um, <laughs> it's a you, pleasure. If, if you guys didn't hear uh, our episode that would have been released on Friday, go back, check out Friday's episode. Um, he's on there. We, we talk a little bit more Nep and Seed. I know everybody's favorite topic. Uh, and we get a little <laughs> bit into the market and all sorts of other fun tangents but today for this deck we're gonna see why here in a minute why it made me scratch my head adhd writing for ember 21 for a plus three four seven board for a 14.67 uh, for a minus three six two ember control possibly the biggest number i've seen on a, on a deck at all period end of story i don't think i've seen a deck bigger than this one um at 14 for a plus eight point four nine and an efficiency at a 333 for a minus 425 consistency at 398 getting into the SAS this is where i scratch my head SAS card rating of 66 five synergies six anti synergies uh, for a total deck rating of 65 so i mean when i first looked at this deck and its stats i when i first looked at the deck what were your thoughts ryan you just i i sent it over to you what what kind of were your thoughts on it? Because I thought, eh, it doesn't look half bad. So I I value creatures, weirdly enough. Uh, when I play Magic, I don't value them, and I, I if at all possible. And weirdly, I, I like that in Keyforge, too. I really want a featureless one if it's possible. But uh, when it comes to what I'm doing, I kind of have a minimum threshold that I'm comfortable with, and that's right around the, the 15, 16... 17 creature mark is where I like to be. This one's clocking in at a, uh, a 14 creature count, which feels a little tricky to me. And then, I, but that you can get around that. A deck can still be good with 14 creatures. But then I started noticing that it's got a couple upgrades. It's got some cards that care about creatures. Uh, it's got creatures that care about creatures. And with a low creature count like that, um, it makes me a little concerned as to how much potential the deck can deliver. Well, should we jump into it right away? I know we were looking the for, for for take numero uno, uh, which will be <laughs> which will forever be known as the lost tapes. Uh, we kind of we jumped over to the AERC um, and kind of took a look over there. It's a fifty three five AERC um, and kind of looking at some of its uh, synergies and anti synergies. But let's let's you know let's start breaking down Mars uh, Jammer Pack one Ember. Uh, put it on a creature for an upgrade. This creature gains your opponent's keys, cost plus two. Two of those bad boys in there. Ulik Mega Mouth, three power creature. When you use a friendly, uh, when he reaps or fights, use a friendly non Mars creature. Uh, Yixalo Bolter, when he reaps or fights, he's three power as well. He deals two damage to a uh, two damage to a creature. If that creature is destroyed. Purge it. You're out of here. John Smith, two power creature with elusive. Ready a non-agent Mars creature. Now I'm I'm gonna stop here because I really dig. I don't know if they consider this a synergy, but I, I've had a lot of times where I've reaped with with Ulik, reaped with John to ready Ulik to reap with Ulik to do something else. You know what I mean? So now you've got two other creatures joining the stockpile in what you're yeah. doing. I don't know if they consider that a synergy over on the SAS side, but I, I really like, I think it should be, uh, but let's go. I would hope so. And yeah, with, with Ixalo Bolter is a great machine gun. Uh, you can 
purge a bunch of those annoying shadow creatures by just nailing them for two damage, or you can take out something bigger, um, like a snuffle gator or a niffle that's causing you havoc, you know, with your own shadow creatures. So being able to just machine gun stuff with that bolter John Smith combo is pretty gross. And well, we actually have some cards, I believe later on in shadows that are going to help him out. Um, it's obviously got to come out in the right order. That doesn't always happen. But um, I think there's two copies of the card I'm thinking of that will definitely help out Bolter. Uh, but continuing on, Mothership for an Ember. For each friendly, ready Mars creature uh, is my most hated phrase on every Mars card. Uh, <laughs> deal two damage to a creature. So obviously, again, a little more help for Bolter, but there's only four creatures of the deck. Uh, maybe you reveal none and just gain the Ember for that one. Uh, EMP Blast for an Ember. Each Mars creature, uh, each Mars creature, and each robot creature is stunned. Each artifact is destroyed. So I wonder if they consider that a synergy. I'm gonna go p actually pop over that and see what they consider that as. I'm actually I'm quite, quite curious on that one. What are we looking for here? EMP blast. Uh, so they do consider that they do consider that a synergy as, as a low creature count. So, okay. Dig it. Oh, I can see that, I guess. Uh, but what are the few artifact hate cards? So I can really get behind this card. It's I've gone up against decks where the artifacts just ran away with things. 15 Seeker Needles? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think uh, one of my favorite decks has, I think I've gotten out six artifacts on the table at one time. There was like two Seeker Needles, a Lash of Broken Dreams, Library of the Dam, stuff like that. And it's just so much value off of those artifacts. It, comes, it becomes too much. Yeah. Uh, but next up, this is a card I had to search because I hadn't seen it um, much. I know I own decks with it. But Martian Hounds. Choose a creature for each damaged creature. Give the chosen creature two plus one power counters. So, kind of could be fun, uh, but again, we're talking, we don't have creatures with a lot of high health, so I don't know how much how many damaged creatures you're going to have on the board. Could also be your opponent's damaged creatures, so if you hit the, uh, um, I don't know what's oh, in Oh, it does deck say for like... each damaged creature, you are 100% clear, hey. not for each of yours, so... There might be a Shadows card that can help make that one good, but it would be a great way. And you don't have to choose a Mars creature to grow. So you could choose, uh, like, you know, uh, oh, I guess, spoiler, there's a Dodger in the deck. Yep. Uh, you could choose Dodger, use a card that damages everything, and then slap all those power counters on your Dodger, and now you're fighting for days. Yep. Sounds good to me. Orbital Bombardment for an Ember. Reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand. For each card, reveal this way. Deal two damage to a creature. You may choose different targets for each time. So I've I've never met an orbital bombardment I didn't like. It's a good card. Uh, Hypnotic Command. This is actually one of my favorite Mars cards. I know there's only four cre Mars creatures in the deck, so hopefully you get some, some value out of it. But for each friendly Mars creature, not for each friendly ready Mars creature, they just have to be there. You can choose an enemy creature to capture one from their own side. This is, like, almost as good as Tempo, but not quite, but it is. It's, it, it would be fantastic with a higher creature count. Yeah, it, it would be, but just uh, the card itself, uh, I have a Mars deck that has this in it, and it's got, like, six creatures. So just, like, taking it away from them and then putting it as bait on their own creatures is, like, I don't know. I feel I feel a sense of accomplishment when I do that. Totally. It's so rude. Fast is so rude. Phosphorus stars. Stun each non-Mars creature. Gain two chains. So a little board control for you there. And then sample so, collection. Oh, go ahead. Do you want to go back to Phosphorus stars? So normally you would think, hey, um, you know, if, if you have Mars and uh, you have Phosphorus stars, that kind of stinks. Uh, but you only have four Mars creatures, so you're not going to be um, stunning a lot. Uh, you're not going to have a lot left on the board to capitalize on the phosphorus stars so you've got all of your non-march creatures that are going to get potentially stunned but with this deck good news not a lot of creatures period right. so phosphorus stars comes back around to being pretty decent yeah to being able to kind of just maybe stall a game so you can do your thing exactly uh, another card i had to look up sample collection today i actually did not know what this card did 
uh, but it is an action. Play an enemy creature, or put an enemy creature into your archives for each key your opponent has forged. If at any t uh, if any of these creatures leave your archives, you can put that they go to their owner's hand instead. So a card I actually didn't know what I did uh, didn't know what it did. But again, kind of the later in the game it is, the better it becomes. That's kind of when you need it, it'll it'll be there. But the trick is that, you know, if you're letting them get to the point where they have two keys, it might be too little too late. Yeah, very true. Uh, overall, Mars is very, I'm going to call it meh, very middle of the road. I don't, you don't have really have enough creatures to, to capitalize on a lot of, uh, what you're looking at here. Uh, hypnotic command phosphorus stars is kind of a mixed bag. Um, EMP blast, uh, very nice. Cause again, not a lot of Mars creatures. So you don't really, you can just play it and blow up artifacts. What, what are your thoughts on the Mars end? I'm not not happy about it. Um, you've got John Smith, which you know, with only three other targets for him, doesn't do a lot for you. Um, for him, because there's only three. There's Mega Mouth, Bolter, and then John Smith That's himself. It. So there's only three, three Mars creatures in here. Yep. I thought we were going. So there's two other targets. So your John Smith is is pretty much just uh, a dead card. His target is Ulick Mega Mouth. Like period yeah, if you can get the I think Bolt out, is Bolter an agent? No, he's just a soldier. Um, that also it's same problem with Hypnotic Command. You don't have a lot of Mars creatures. Um, the same problem with uh, was it Mothership Support? I believe that cared about how many creatures you had. Yep, for each friendly ready Mars creature. Yep, three cards in there that are really not going to benefit you a whole lot. I guess the big thing, Mothership Support, at least bare minimum gets you a number right and that's the that's the nice thing is that at least some of these dead cards will still get you uh, an ember john smith still reaps um so he's just it would be nice if he also could apply his effect more often so not uh, based on this house alone if this was the only thing i see i don't i don't have a lot of hope for this deck but let's see what else we got headed into shadow seven creatures five actions uh we start out with naughty the thief two power creature with elusive as an action steal one Good card. Uh, good card. Bad Penny. One power creature. Just when she's destroyed, you just return her to hand. Not a big deal. She just has a thing. Magda the Rat. Four power elusive creature. Uh, when you play Magda, you steal two. When Magda leaves play, your opponent uh, steals two. So I, I always like, kind of viewed Magda as that card that you, you kind of got to deal with. She's a, she's a really interesting tempo card because... If you can get into Magic Christmas Land where you steal their two and then forge before they can kill Magda and then either, you know, pawn sacrifice your own Magda or run her into something to get her killed, then the risk of losing the two is off the table, literally. Um, but if you can't arrange that Magic Christmas Land scenario, it's still a pretty solid tempo play because you take the two. Hopefully you can forge quickly enough with it. And then even if they get two back, you may be able to control when that happens so that it's not such a big deal. Like maybe you let her die or you arrange it so that she's more easily killed uh, when you've got 10 Ember. So they take two. You're still at eight. And you know what? That's not that bad. So she's a really interesting tempo play. It's what I'm not sure about is her place in this deck. Can this deck be fast enough? where you can leverage that tempo she provides with uh, with all your other bonus ember and everything else. And I'm not sure the deck can hit that mark. Obviously, um, she has that tempo play. But I view her as when Magda hits, and I've even caught myself doing it, when Magda hits the board, it's, it's kind of the magician's trick, right? Yeah. You know, don't pay attention to what the right hand is doing. Please watch the left hand. She uh, cards like her are uh, I kind of colloquially refer to them as lightning rods mm -hmm. because you would slap them on the table and they just draw removal. Uh, Mesis Asp, it's a uh, another shadows creature. Power three has skirmish and then poison. That's another lightning rod. People see that and they just quake in fear that this thing is going to kill all their precious creatures. So, um, so I guess the hope is that we use Magda and and spoiler alert, we got a moon cursor in here too. Uh, he's only a one power creature, but he has skirmish and poison. And when he fights, he steals one. So, uh, yeah, kind of fun there, really, because doesn't get dealt any damage in return when he's fighting somebody and he just kills someone. 
And oh, by the way, he also steals one. A lot of value in him. The only problem is he dies to like any. He dies to sneezing, more yep. or less. But um, <laughs> it just kind of the whole like the hope is like use these kind of Magda and Moon cursors um, to say, hey, look over here. And while you're looking over here, I'm doing something different. I guess. Well, we'll we'll keep trucking along here. Uh, Silver Tooth, when he comes to Power Creature, when he enters play, he just enters ready for funsies. Uh, Dodger, five power creature. When he fights, he steals one, uh, a pair of those. So I like Dodger a lot, although I'm going to have to say, let's be honest. He's probably only ever really stealing one, but he can reap for days. Unfortunately in this deck, if you can pull off the, uh, Martian hounds from the Mars Mm -hmm. section, you can get yourself a pretty decent Dodger. Yeah, absolutely. I I was almost looking and we're going to come to some cards later on. Um, that I'm looking at now, and I'm like, oh, that actually, I think, I think there's a better target in this deck for that Martian Harlands, um, if you can pull it off. Uh, but we got two poison waves, an ember, and it deals two damage to each creature, which is good because this deck doesn't have a ton of them. And we just mentioned Dodger plus uh, the Martian Hounds, and that's a great combo. You get Dodger down, you hit with Poison Wave, and then the following turn. You play Martian Hounds, and there's going to be a lot of damaged creatures to grow that Dodger and keep him around just fighting and stealing turn after turn after. Or just, a, you know, if you got a back-to-back them, and you're, you're, yeah, getting a little, you're getting a little swarmed, and you got a back-to-back the Poison Wave, it's a quick so four damage. So. That's how you get rid of your Magda. You, uh, you plot Magda down, steal, forge, following turn, while you have zero Ember, double Poison Wave, and take out your own Magda. There you go. Uh, ghostly hand to Ember. Uh, if your opponent has exactly one, steal it. Which doesn't happen so much, but you know, you do have this next card, which is Routine Job. Steal one, then steal one for each copy of Routine Job in your discard pile. Two of those bad boys. So with the Routine Job and things such as Dodger, um, and Magda, you do have the possibility of getting your opponent down to one and and playing a well timed ghostly hand. Absolutely. Uh, headed into Logos, we have the Bat Drone. Uh, skirmish 2 power creature. When he fights, he steals one if he, you know, makes it after <laughs> you play him, basically. Um, Bat Drone is the biggest lightning rod of almost anything I've seen creature-wise. Yeah. He just, every time, he'll just die. Everybody wants him gone. And here's the it, card I think is actually a better target for the Martian Hounds, we have a Maverick Snuffle Gator. He's a four-power creature with Skirmish. He can just kind of run Ruckshot. Put a couple uh, put a couple of Jammer Packs on him and let him just run wild. <laughs> you know? So rude. So rude. Yeah. I was just like, oh, well, you know, he, uh, he because he can eat a Poison Wave and still stick around. And then all of a sudden you you put a you put a backpack on him and oh by the way he's gonna gain uh he's gonna gain what is it it's two health for each damage creature right or two power for each so. damage yeah two uh, two plus one counters for each power uh, at each damage creature you so he's going up against a Brobnard deck this Snuffle Gator can get out of hand quickly oh did we lose did we lose Ryan there we go oh there we go okay but. My- Sorry, the connectivity's fading in and out a little bit. I apologize. No, no worries. Oh, we are fading quickly. Uh, we're just going to continue on. If we get Ryan back, that'll be great. Uh, but we, we're headed up uh, for Brain Power, six power creature. After a creature's destroyed fighting Brain Eater, uh, draw a card. And again, another another awesome, awesome, awesome target for your Martian Hounds, I think. Are are you back now? I just saw a, cut, a flash. So, I am sorry about that. No, I don't know I don't what's know going on. Is it my connection? Might be or me, I, but I, I'm not willing to put the blame squarely on your shoulders. Oh, but uh, we just <laughs> went through Brain Eater, which is another awesome target uh, for Fantastic your Martian card. Hounds. Absolutely. Uh, if that thing gets big, it can just sit there and just keep cracking into things. You annihilate their board, and and you're drawing cards. Yeah, who who doesn't love drawing cards? Uh, Dr. Escoterra, four-power creature. Gain one for each Ford key out of your opponent has. 
Again, another game, another card that becomes greater late game. And he's okay in the beginning. He's not the greatest, but Library of Babel. Uh, artifact, action, draw a card. And again, who doesn't love drawing cards? <laughs> uh, another uh, lab work. We went over lab work last week. You just play it, archive a card for an ember. Dimensional Door. I didn't even see this when I was originally going through the deck. But uh, it is an action for the remainder of turn. Any ember you had gained from reaping is instead stolen from your opponent instead. Uh, kind of a bummer, huh? We only got four creatures on the logo side. I know. I don't think I have ever... I have a couple decks with Dimension Door, and I think every single one of them has maybe five Logos creatures max. It's so depressing. Yeah, I, did, I didn't even see the Dimensional Door. Um, that is kind of a bummer. I mean, you could pair them up with Bat Drone, I guess. The Steal. tough thing here is that... So not only do you have a low creature count in Logos to really benefit off of Dimension Door, but let's say you get all four of your creatures out. Well, three of them want to fight. Right. So you're already hamstringing yourself if you try to get that benefit off of Dimension Door. I mean, the nice thing, at least with Bat Drone, whether you fight or reap, you're still stealing with Dimension Door out. Mm -hmm. So at least like you're, you're a little bit incentivized to to reap with Bat Drone. But Snuffle Grater, Brain Eater, you don't get the, the nice bonus effect off of those if you're reaping instead of fighting. Right. Neurosiphon, one Ember action. If your opponent has more Ember than you, steal one and draw a card. Love Neurosiphon. I, I can't tell you how many times, though, I have completely messed up my Ember count, and I've, I'm at two, they're at three, I play Neurosiphon, and then as soon as it hits the table, I realize that the bonus Ember puts me at three, and I don't get the bonus effect. Uh, well, you get to choose the order in which it goes, do you not? Oh, so when you're resolving cards, and this is a handy trick I use, it's also how you do them, you start at the top of the card and you work your way down. So bonus ember is the very first thing that happens. And I remember learning this with Wild Wormhole and Library Access, because if you have Library Access out, you play Wild Wormhole, first thing that happens is that bonus ember. Then the Library Access trigger, then the Wild Wormhole resolves. Is that so similarly? A, is that a rule? I think it's a, I think it's in the FAQ. I'm going to have to go look at that uh, because I always thought as the active player, you choose how the card resolves. So I, if I, I would if always I'm assume wrong, you I apologize. Yeah, I would always assume you steal one, gain your bonus, and then draw your card. I would be so happy if I'm wrong because I would love the, I would love this card to not have that rider of potentially the bonus ember um, messing with your plan. So I'll have to look that up too. And uh, if I am wrong, I totally apologize, uh, mostly to myself for not getting more value out of this neurosiphon yeah i'm gonna have to i actually i got the rules kind of like over on my printer over here so i'm gonna have to check it out too uh but one of my favorite cards bouncing death quark destroy yeah. an enemy creature and a friendly creature you may repeat this process effect as many times as you'd like as long as it's possible to re repeat the entire effect so pseudo sure. board wipe basically Yep, and this is a great lead into Poison Wave. Uh, if you have a lot of weaker creatures and you know that you want a Poison Wave to help clear the board, you could use Bouncing Death Quark to get rid of some of their tougher stuff. Maybe they've got a Bulwark out there, and your Poison Wave isn't going to have as much impact as long as they got that Bulwark. Well, you know, your Batron's going to die to your Poison Wave anyway, so maybe now he's Bouncing Death Quark fodder to take out that, that Bulwark. Absolutely. Uh, Parafogifies. Your opponent cannot use creatures to fight on their next turn for one ember. So always, uh, I guess, have you ever had a turn where you're like, man, I just really need Fogify? Oh, normally I'm lukewarm towards it. It's good. You know, it disrupts them. It's tricky because Fogify gets better um, the more situational it is, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like you want to kind of, you're incentivized to hold on to it and play it during an opt opportune or optimal moment. But Keyforge, it's really, really on to cards too long because that's less cards you could be drawing and the impact of using a fogify at the right moment isn't necessarily equal to the benefit you would have had of drawing cards for you know the three four turns that you hung on to it however in this deck with such a low creature count and creatures that want to do things where they they fight to steal ember they uh they reap to do things fogify becomes much more useful because your opponent is going to outnumber your creatures, which means they can afford to just crack in and take out your board without really sacrificing their their reaping plan. So Fogify helps helps you help you yeah yeah helps you keep your board around a little bit longer to do what you need to do and put the beat down back on your side. Absolutely, I dig that uh, analysis of it. 
Uh, and then we go into Effervescent Principle. This is a card that screwed me more than once. <laughs> um, each player loses half their ember, rounding down the loss. Gain a chain. So I have I have a funny story. Um, I have a deck with Reverse Time and Library Access and Wild Wormhole and, of course, Effervescent Principle in there. And I had a turn where I got myself from, like, two ember up to, like, eight ember, ten ember, something like that. And then Wild Wormhole was the last card I played, flipped right into Effervescent Principle. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. All that ember. Uh, that's One like, ember. Wild Wormhole is a crazy <laughs> card, man. Everybody loves it, but it's just like... Man, you know, I I wonder I wonder what the percentage on like how many times Wild Wormhole has screwed somebody over oh, like how I, many times it saved them the game. I had a I had a an opponent that was um he had like this massive Brobnar board where he was going to be able to re, re for like four. Actually, he had he had Mars and Brobnar, so no matter which of those houses he chose, he'd be reaping for four or five Ember with his creatures, and he could ignore my board because he just annihilated it with all his stuff. So he chooses Logos because uh, he wants to get some more stuff out there, I guess. Wild Wormhole flips Coward's End, annihilates oh. his entire. Board. <laughs> you always hear about the bad Wild Wormhole stories. You never hear oh, about no. the good ones, right? I wild worm hole to I a think the only switch good... and I stole seventeen amber. <laughs> I think the only good wild wormhole story is when you wormhole into a wormhole into a wormhole. And then it doesn't matter what you get on that last one, because you just triple wormhole. And that's that's like a Is that, I mean, I'm even thinking about that now. Is there even like would I even I now I'm looking at decks I'm like, oh it's got you know, every now I get a crack one, I'll go, Oh, it's got a wild wormhole. That's fun. And the then but now I'm thinking about it, it, it's like it could be it's ter that's terrifying. Yeah, you never have a good wild wormhole because they took away things like Khalifi Dragon and Chibaru <laughs> and all that. Like those are all gone now. And all that's left is all the bad. Uh, I I love the card though. I don't care how bad Wild Wormhole is. Like I would be <coughs> excuse me. Uh I would be happy if they printed Wild Wormhole in every set forever. Every set maybe they will. They made a play maybe, out guess... of it, so maybe they will. Yeah, I mean, I hate Key of Darkness, and they're they're not reprinting that. So that was my dream was not to see Key of Darkness ever again in another deck I bought. Oh, <laughs> so I was gonna say yeah, maybe, Key of Darkness. I've never successfully pulled one off. I almost, almost one time, I was one ember away from pulling it off and winning a game with it. So of course, I was one ember away uh, away and couldn't pull it off because that's how Key of Darkness works. Yeah, because I had, I had a Key of Darkness and a one last job. The only problem was is that the creature, you know, the deck only had like four shadows creatures in it. So it's, it's another card. <laughs> yeah, another card. It's like I can one last job, but to what avail? You know, there's not. Yeah, not. So circling back around to uh, effervescent principle. Yes, that's pretty much the only mass ember control in the deck, I believe. That's the only one that can steal more than you know one, maybe two ember in, yes. in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, ember. there's just a lot of it in here, though. I mean, There's really? a lot of incremental uh, theft, but if your opponent, so the way to beat this deck is to out ember it. Yeah, so race it. you, right? You, I mean, you don't have to worry about bait and switch. You don't have to worry about um, too much to protect. Too much to protect. Uh, obviously, none of the Brobnar or Sanctum cards are on the table as far as that goes. The old, literally, the only thing you have to worry about is effervescent principle. So you're, uh, if if you're the one playing against this deck, this deck is either holding on to effervescent principle and praying that a situation comes up soon where they'll get some good value out of it, or they're discarding it, which telegraphs that they're not going to have it available to them. And right. then you just go off the rails with your own Ember generation. And this deck is trying to kind of, you know, like uh, take little bits of your Ember away from you. And the only way they can do that is to call shadows over and over and over again. So right. if they ever want to call something other than shadows, they're not taking Ember. So it's really risky. But that having been said, um, it does have a lot of that nitpicky, you know, little bits of, uh, let's call it in incremental Ember control. And it has a ton of Ember generation. I actually really underestimated how much Ember generation it had, as well as its Ember control. Um, it's It's got a lot. It's a lot more than I expected. Yeah, I'm showing you guys kind of the analytic view now. Um, you know, it's it's got no, oh, it doesn't have a number here anymore. Uh, oh no, so it <laughs> does. Twelve Ember Thieves, twelve Ember bonuses, um, and that wow, they consider Mega Mouth and Bolter and John Smith brawlers. No, interesting. Oh, that... it's just cards with fight in the, oh. in the yeah. Okay. I okay, was that like, makes sense. I wouldn't so the, consider them brawlers, but okay. 
the, and the reason this deck is so strong with its Ember Generation um, is because it's double dipping. Like any Shadows deck, it's double dipping with its Steel effects. Because Steel, not only is it depriving your opponent of Ember, which Brobnar can do, which Sanctum can do, it's also advancing your own game plan. If we go with that metaphor of you're in a foot race with your opponent, except it's legal to trip them and the ref doesn't care, then not yeah, only it's the, it's is... It's the WWE of foot races. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a <laughs> WWE in a foot race in WWE. This is how it would work. Um, yeah. So not only like uh, like let's take a look at um, you know uh, something like uh, I don't know example. So routine job is going to steal an ember. Yes, steal one. Let's assume you don't have any in your in your discard pile. So it's going to steal one. That means that in this foot race example, you not only took a step forward to the finish line your opponent took a step backwards so that is a two-step difference in your race compared to something like a brobnar card where it's burning off one of their ember they lose one ember that just means that they take one step back so there's only a difference of one step there or mm -hmm. where uh, like raiding night you capture one well they take one step back but you're not taking any steps forward and that's where shadows and especially this deck's shadow component is really really strong every time you're taking a step forward with the shadows card you're forcing them a step back as well and so you're widening that gap over and over and over again like magda you're two steps forward they're two steps back i mean you guys are pretty much paul abdul at that point <laughs> i like that i don't think anybody on this channel is going to understand the reference but i dig it those um, are my best jokes are the ones yeah. that like you know i dip down and there's like one percent of the listenership that that gets the joke but that one percent somebody in the it. comments will go lol i understood and <laughs> I, I guarantee you there will be two of them one of them actually did understand the other one has no idea what's going on <laughs> i think i just earned you some one-star reviews you're welcome absolutely <laughs> uh, uh but i mean overall i'm gonna give this deck a run this week um i do have some or uh, some open play events coming up uh, this upcoming week I, i'm gonna give it a shot i, I normally don't play decks with with cru i mean you know a, a lot of my decks my my better decks have they do have high SASs, but i just i i can't ignore this this stat here this ember well, like, ember control like we said like with that foot race thing i i've broken it down into two terms the speed and the stumble the speed is how fast you're running your race the stumble is how much you can make your opponent stumble during the race the it's those steps back that they're taking. And this deck has a crazy amount of speed and a crazy amount of stumble between its Ember and Ember Control. What it doesn't have for control, and it doesn't have a lot of deck manipulation. So if your opponent gets off the ground running and it can withstand that incremental Ember Control, because remember, there's no mass Ember Control. Mm -hmm. It's just incremental. If they can hit the ground running and just build up a pool of Ember that you can't steal enough from, then they're just going to run roughshod over this deck, and there's nothing this deck will be able to do about it. Right. Um, likewise, this deck has, with kind of some of the the cards that want synergy, like the um, uh, the what do we call it? The mothership support, um, John Smith. There's a lot of opportunity for this deck to shoot itself in the foot by having bad draws. Like you get two jammer packs and a mothership support, and then three shadows cards. Uh, you know, like ghostly hand and two poison waves, mm. and that's a really rough hand to be playing. Yeah, did we get any awesome elusive? Well, I guess Magda and Nadi are our only two. Elu oh, moon cursors. Shadow is solid. The Shadow House is really solid, yeah, and that's going to be solid. the workhorse of this deck. There's supplemental pieces in Mars that are solid, and there's supplemental Logo pieces that are solid. Um, at least Logos doesn't have a ton of anti-synergy within itself like the Mars House does. Right. Uh, I think if, if we... So in a fictional constructed universe where uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the the house party format where you yeah, I have. take houses. OK, yep. so you you take if you could extract the Mars House out of this deck and put in a better Mars House. Um, then this deck would be firing really well. Like, like even, even a mediocre Mars house to replace this one, just with like a slightly better creature count and otherwise similar cards would make this deck jump hugely in terms of quality and consistency. Cause it's got the right pieces. They just, they just not the right creature count in Mars for it to really fire off. And, and a little bit the same with logos. I expect you to be calling shadows kind of over and over and over again with this, uh, with this deck. More than likely. I'm going to give it a run this week. Um, for some of the open play events, uh, I'll have my I'll have my buddies all kind of bring um hey bring your big bad decks. I want to see how this does, because um, <laughs> this and then there's one other deck we're gonna go through next week, 
which is basically this deck's antithesis. Um, it's oh. got, in fact, I think I still have it pulled up. Uh, yeah, you guys can look at it here. Kind of sneak preview at uh, Penske. Um, it has a lot of ember. It has a good amount of ember control. Not so great on the board. And again, efficiency. Yeah, as you can see it. Three ghostly hands. Ow, that yeah. is double you know, double poison weight. I mean, this that's going to be an interesting fight. Um, yeah, it's got see... it's got a Mac the knife yeah. and a Magda the rat. That these two decks would just be literally a foot race where like like this is foot race where both decks are running with a steel chair down that aisle. Trying right, to I, I feel like, like both of these decks are like it's like, <laughs> like, and it was weird because I'm like this is the exact opposite of the last one. Yeah. You know, where even now Ancient Bear can come in and ruin somebody. You know, it's got a couple Ancient Bears. It could ruin somebody's day, especially with a lot of those. You know, you, you go into uh, go into that Moon Cursor with Ancient Bear. Ancient Bear comes out unscathed. unscathed. He walks away like a badass. If I had to put my money on those two decks, I'm thinking this one, man. Thinking so? Maybe, maybe I'll pit them to get against each other, and I'll Here film it. There you go. I, I got the camera. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do that this week and just pit these two against together and we'll post it up online but uh be a table ladder chair match though yeah a little tlc match but <laughs> ryan i so appreciate you coming on with me tonight even with all the craziness that happened around me um i i, I promise you it doesn't always happen like this it's not a problem it was a pleasure being here thank you so much for having me on uh, i had a great time it's no. great talking with you why don't you give your plugs one more time uh, so if you're still with us, and hopefully you are, uh, we are the Keychains Podcast. You can catch us at Keychains Pod on Twitter, Gmail, Facebook, all that stuff. Keychains Podcast on Instagram. Uh, we release episodes on Friday. We're a little bit more towards the casual, beginner-friendly type of thing. Uh, we dip our toes into competitive. Um, we really like to pretend that we're competitive until we end up 0-4 in events and we have to face the harsh reality that maybe we're not. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I've never had that feeling. <laughs> I've never gone away <laughs> for. Oh no, it's it's great. Try it sometime. I've gone two and two, and it was like, wow, rough day. You know, rough day at the office. Uh, never gone zero and four, <laughs> but we'll see you guys all later this week. I do still have. Uh, I am still testing out um, strategic dinos token set. Um, so so far so good. I will have a review up when I get around to that. And um, luxury play styles has actually sent me um a set of their stuff so i'll be doing a review on luxury play styles uh token set as well um i can tell you this right now they're heavy spoiler alert so we'll see you guys all next week for another episode take it easy